Hi everybody, let's in this video discuss the pros and cons of monopoly, of highly concentrated markets. Well, it seems logical to start with the cons first. The biggest issue is the allocative inefficiency that comes with a monopoly. Price is higher than marginal cost, meaning consumers are exploited paying more than what it costs to produce. Lower consumer surplus comes as a result. Monopolies restrict output, they restrict choice, and there could be quality issues as well. The diagram here is a brilliant diagram to show the deadweight welfare loss that a monopoly creates, here isolating the deadweight loss of consumer surplus. I made a video going through this in a lot of detail, so make sure you have this diagram learned. It's a very powerful diagram showing the difference between monopoly outcomes and competitive market outcomes where we would see allocative efficiency. The allocative inefficiency here is very clear with the higher prices with the lower output. Monopolies are also productively inefficient. They voluntarily forego economies of scale. They don't minimize their costs by operating on the lowest part of their average cost curve. So one way to look at it is they're to the left of the minimum point, voluntarily foregoing economies of scale. The other way is that they're too big and therefore they suffer diseconomies of scale, maybe to the right of the minimum point of their average cost curve. Either way, costs are gonna be higher than what they could be. Prices will be higher as a result. Consumers lose in that way too. We could argue that monopolies are X inefficient. They allow for waste in their production process, complacency due to a lack of competitive drive, uh, producing beyond their average cost curve, allowing for excess costs to creep in here. Again, another reason for higher prices in highly concentrated markets. But we could also bring in the idea that monopolies can cause inequalities, especially in necessity markets. Because of these higher prices, the poor could suffer the most if monopolies are focused more in necessity markets like groceries, for example, food and drink. We do not want to see monopolies there. That would be a very bad thing for those on the lower incomes in society. And that would lead to quite wide income inequalities in society. Monopolies do have some pros though, we can't ignore those. One of the biggest benefits of a monopoly is dynamic efficiency benefits, being able to reinvest super normal profit being made back into the business. And that's good for consumers, we get innovative brand new products of higher quality, better technologies over time, potentially lower prices over time. But it's also good for producers who are able to maybe patent any new technologies and keep earning those profits over time. Uh, they could gain market share by being able to beat rivals through their innovations over time. Better technology can also lower costs over time. So it's good for both consumers and producers if there is dynamic efficiency taking place, and there could well be uh, due to the profits that monopolies make. We could argue, number two, a very powerful point. Despite the productive inefficiencies of monopoly compared to competitive firms, they may still be exploiting greater economies of scale purely because of their size. If we go straight to this diagram down below, it can clearly be seen that the monopoly's marginal cost curve is lower than the marginal cost curve of competitive firms due to greater economies of scale. In certain markets, that is absolutely true. Greater economies of scale potential if the firm is bigger than if the firms were smaller. And as a result, a profit maximizing monopolist using this diagram is charging a lower price and producing a higher quantity than a competitive firm being allocatively efficient. So number two is a great argument to make in certain industries if we take things like car manufacturing, supermarkets, economies of scale potential is very, very large there. And in those markets, maybe some kind of monopoly power could give greater economies of scale than even competitive firms being productively efficient. And therefore the end outcomes we get could be the reverse to what we expect. A very powerful, interesting argument. And you have to be very careful how you use that argument depending on the market you're talking about. We already know about natural monopolies and how a regulated natural monopoly is going to give society desirable outcomes as opposed to a natural monopoly market where there is competition, which will breed inefficiency. And also bear in mind that monopolies can cross subsidize goods and services. They can use their very high super normal profits to subsidize a loss making good or service that they are also producing, but that is socially desirable. Now who knows, monopolies might want to still produce a good or service, and if they're making high profits in one area, they can subsidize a loss making good or service and thus keep it being produced and therefore keep consumers happy in the process. So there are examples where firms do this and that is a benefit for sure. They could only do it if they're making high profits for one good or service in the first place though. 
So these are nice arguments on either side of the debate. Can we evaluate though? Can we critique some of this theory? Absolutely. We can critique whether dynamic efficiency is really going to occur. In theory, we said yes. In reality, so many other things can be done with the profit that monopolists make. They could give it to shareholders via high dividends. They could save it. They could deleverage, pay off debts. They could pay their workers high salaries. Um, that is not reinvesting back into capital in the business. So is there going to be dynamic efficiency? Not a guarantee. Of course, we need to question economies of scale or diseconomies of scale more likely. Depends on the size of the firm. What's the objective of the monopolist? We assume it's profit max in all of our analysis and that leads us to outcomes of allocative inefficiency and price exploitation, restriction of output. But what if the objective of the monopolist is a bit more um, better for society, if it's something like sales maximization or if it's something like a CSR that they're promoting, who knows, their objective might be to actually be allocatively efficient. So we can always question the objective of the firm. A regulated monopoly can help reduce some of the inefficiencies. There is a video later in this playlist where we go into more detail as to how we can regulate monopolies that can help reduce some of their negative impacts here. Price discrimination we know can exaggerate the negatives of monopoly, especially the allocative inefficiencies and the inequalities that monopolies can create. So that you can use to kind of weigh up your arguments against monopoly here. Is there competition? Now remember this, we said that a theoretical extreme monopoly, a pure monopoly, is not realistic. More realistic is whether a firm has got monopoly power, the power to act like a monopoly. We call that a legal monopoly. So that means that there could still be a strong competition in the industry. Take the UK supermarket industry. You've got Tesco with legal monopoly power here, but there is still plenty of competition in that market. And as long as there is competition, that can keep monopolies honest and prevent some of the major inefficiencies that we see otherwise. But not even if there is actual competition, if there is a threat of competition, i.e. if the market is contestable, that could be enough also to reduce some of these inefficiencies. Great argument there. We've already said we have to think about whether the market is a natural monopoly market or not. And also we have to think about the type of good or service that is made here. For a necessity, monopoly definitely is going to be bad news. But hey, you know, if it's a more luxury good, electronics as an example, then maybe we don't mind necessarily paying a bit higher for these goods if we get constant reinvestment as a result of dynamic efficiency. So the type of good or service can give you some quite unique evaluation points. That covers, guys. Monopoly, big discussion, pros, cons, and evaluation, very useful for an essay. I really hope that helps. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.